Okay, but before we go into the match, we have the Army National Guard Hero of the Match. And it's one that you, Captain Atsukat, were talking about. It is Pende, actually, the one going away with the hero of the match and, and i want to give you this this moment because you've been talking about this player since the beginning so so once again reminding us why pandy is so good if you want to build team packages and player packages in your vmix replay workflow then you need to be labeling your replay events with that data as you go in a fast-paced game like valorant which features teams of five players each that's a lot of data to keep track of and load up between matches Last year, for the Energy Neon Dream event, I approached this problem in Companion by using custom variables to populate data on a page of buttons for player labeling. Each button would load that team name and player name into a custom variable for a label. I could then add some other information to the label, like palms or clutch, and then press Apply Label to actually put it on the replay event. For example, I'll create a replay event. I will select Team 2, Player 2, and clutch, and then apply the label. In Companion here, you can see the variables I was using for building the label and entering all of the team and player information. Between matches, I would go into this page and update all 12 of the relevant values, which were five players per team and one team name per team. This may not sound like much, but when you're finally getting downtime in a high intensity, high pace environment like Valorant Replay, you really want to rest up and reset between matches so that you can do your best work. An additional problem I found myself running into with the way I approach things was that applying multiple pieces of info into one label was taking a lot of variable management, extra button presses, and extra pain when I made mistakes. Because if I had to fix, say, a player name in a label that consisted of a player name and clutch, I would have to redo the other parts of the label when I fixed the player name. Yet another problem I ran into was that labeling would get too long sometimes. If I create an event and I try to apply a label for this player, as well as additional info like clutch, and then apply the label, you can't even read the additional information in the replay controller. My goals for revamping the workflow this year were to reduce changeover between matches, decouple the different types of labeling info I was applying, reduce the pain resulting from any data changes or labeling mistakes that I make, and to still leave myself some room to manually fix things if needed. I knew that Companion has a Google Sheets module and that this could surely eliminate almost all of my manual data entry work. The connection takes a little bit of know-how, but the module in Companion does a pretty good job of explaining that process step by step. Once I established the connection, all of the cell values in my team info Google Sheet were available to me as variables in Companion. Perfect. I got team names, tricodes, and the player names. Next, I need to determine a process for selecting the data for the current teams. It made the most sense to me to actually keep my Companion custom variables as the place where I'd hold that current data. So my labeling page itself didn't really change much. When we look at the actions for one of the player label buttons, it's performing the same action where it uses those custom variables to form a text string that it then applies as a label to the vMix replay event. To perform the step of actually loading new data into those custom variables, I created two pages of buttons which were nearly identical. One is for selecting Team 1, the other is for selecting Team 2. As with most things in Companion, you're usually best off creating one page and at that one button which was this one actually, getting it to work the way you want, and then copying it to the rest of the page and adjusting the values as needed. So I started with that one button. It needs to read the team name, player names for that team from the Google Sheet, assign those values to the companion custom variables, and then return the stream deck to the labeling page. Pretty simple, and it works as you can see. However, it is pretty tedious. When I copy this, each cell value needs to be adjusted by one, and I have to update them on every single action. For Rebellion, they were in row two on the sheet, so the players were F2 through J2. Complexity were row three, so F3 through J3. You see where this is going when you repeat this seven times. On top of that, 
this is just the Team 1 page. I then had to copy all of the buttons to the Team 2 page, and instead of assigning variables for Team 1 Player 1, I'm now assigning for Team 2 Player 1, and so on for the rest of the assignments. So, tedious, but well worth it. Now that all those buttons are done, well, it just works. And the neat part is I can reuse this on any project as long as I reuse the same table structure in a sheet. To decouple my label types, I decided to use a different VMIX shortcut to assign my labels to replay events. Before, I was using the replay set selected event text shortcut, which seems to always default to camera one on the selected clip. Instead, I'm now going to use replay set selected event text camera which allows me to specify a camera for the text I'm applying. To illustrate the difference, here's a simple button page with my old method on the left and my new method on the right. The old method applies everything to camera one, which runs into the problem of getting too long when I apply multiple types of labeling info. The new method, on the other hand, separates it so it doesn't run into this problem. In my setup for this year's Neon Dream, I used camera one for team and player labels and camera two for multi-kill labels. If I'd had one more camera, I think I would have used it to apply daypack labels, which I manually typed in instead. This does not impact filtering in the replay controller, and it has the benefit of making everything easier to read in the events list. As it turned out, solving for my first two goals, reducing changeover and decoupling label types, actually solved for my last two goals, reducing the cost of mistakes and still allowing custom fixes. While I have some small nitpicks in mind for next time, I'm very happy with how this workflow turned out, and I'm looking forward to using it on future events. Speaking of future events... If you'd like to use my config for your next event, I'll leave a download link for my companion config, along with a test Google Sheet and vMix project, in the description below. Again, you will need to configure your own Google Sheets connection by following the instructions in the companion module, but I believe in you. Feel free to write in the comments if you have any questions or feedback, and good luck out there.